Hey, y'all. Happy Tuesday, or it's Tuesday. Um, right now I'm in Maryland. It's about 1.33 p.m. So I decided to take a break off the road and come and do some videos for the month of June. As I told y'all, the month of June is consistency for me. It's the sixth month of the year. And I want to see more, even more consistency in my content creation with YouTube. I've been falling off a little bit with the podcast because I've been so focused on YouTube and then still focused on, you know, making money. So I was like, you know what? The things have to come together and you just got to keep pushing along and trucking along. So my, for my word for June is consistency. So I want to see more consistency in my content creation across the board, YouTube, uh, my podcasting, and also my exercise. I at least need to be doing six days a week and running a mile five of those days. So that's just my own personal. What are you guys is, uh, what's your word for June? Do you have a word? Have you not thought of a word or what's your word for the year? I wanted to do like a word for the year back when the year first happened. I mean, it seems like it just happened yesterday. Now we're in month six, but I know for me, I have to break things down smaller, right? So I was having a conversation with uh, Corey for those of y'all that are new, the husband, I just say his name that I don't have to keep saying husband, husband, but I had a conversation with Corey and we were talking about running and I was like, yeah, so I went running. This was not yesterday, but the day before. And I said, I'm confident that I could go out and do three now, maybe a slow three, three, minimum two. However, I'm not going to say I need to be running seven miles a week. So that's like, two miles a day plus an additional. What I can commit to is no matter how busy, being out driving, working, doing whatever, I have enough time to fit in a mile because I'm not a sprinter or a faster runner. I'm jogging, right? But I have enough time to do a mile and that's what I can commit to. So knowing I can do more means nothing if I'm not doing more. So I need to do what I can commit to, what I can hold myself accountable to. I've always had not an issue, but it's easier to be accountable when it was to somebody else. So let's say I had a podcast partner, right? Or a co-host. No matter what you're doing, you got to stop and show up. So you don't let down the other person on your team because that's your fault. If you're like, if you, oh, I'm not going to show up today because I'm doing this or doing that. Um, with running, when I used to run with someone else, I made sure I was there no matter what else I had going on because I made a commitment to not just me, but to this person. And now I'm at a time in my life where I need to start being accountable to me for nobody else but me. And that's not on anybody else. That's on me. You know what I mean? I'm going to start saying no more. Like a lot of people, are, oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Or you know how to look things up on the internet? The truth is I learned just the way everyone else does by looking stuff up, right? So I'm going to start saying no. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I just really need things to move. And I know that if I do my, as long as I do my part and keep moving, I'm believing that it'll go where I need it to go. So I didn't mean for the first few minutes to turn into that, but I just felt like I just wanted to share that with y'all. So y'all let me know what y'all words are for the year, for the month. Um, we can do this thing together in the community that we are building, which I'm very thankful for each and every one of you. Let's get into, this is going to be a short video and then I'm going to come back up. Uh, with some other things I wanted to talk to you about, but this is Bravo related. First up, Simon Wabadia, he wants to apologize to his family. So on his Instagram, he said, my life is not a storyline. My life is a story of perseverance. He then, his caption, the, Gu the Guabadia family has always been a prideful family, probably one of the largest families in Nigeria. Our name is literally tied to one single family meaning most people with the last name Guabadia are related. So when one of their family members is, so when I'm gonna read it how he wrote it. So when one of their family member is reduced to a storyline in quotes, thousands of family members are also affected by the narrative created and meant to destroy. I want to publicly acknowledge and apologize to my family, the Guabadias, for the pain my poor judgment may have caused and brought upon our family name. I'm so sorry. I beg for your forgiveness with the praying hands. Then he went on his Instagram to say to, to comfortably call a man sassy is to imply women are weak and emotional. 
that's not a good narrative for our community. Let's do better. Praying hands. His caption said, I love and respect black women. I would never imply that they are less than men. Let's do better. Praying hands. So Simon is out here, child, apologizing to his family um, for the backlash that the name is getting because of his poor decisions and also about calling a man sassy. I will say I, I have had conversations about this before because yes, we can all say, oh, you know what the person is trying to say, or you know what I mean when you say something, right? But my dad says, if you tell him, you know what I mean, he says, then mean what you say. He always says that. Um, so I get the whole, you know, we're all human. So I get, you may say something and you're like, but you girl, you know what I'm trying to say, blah, blah, blah. But I have said before that it kind of rubs me. And I know I've probably said it before in the past and I'm like making sure I don't do that now, but rubs me when it's like, oh, they're like you said, they're sassy but in a, in a derogatory term or feminizing a human trait. If a man shows emotion, oh, he's, act, you know, he, he's acting like a woman or men don't do that. Why are we feminizing human traits? We're not talking about body parts. What a biological male has and what a biological female has, right? We're not talking about that. We're talking about human emotions, human crying, laughing, anger, sadness, happiness. Those shouldn't be attributed to a sex. Male or female should be male, female, non-binary. I'm sorry, non-binary. Human is what it should be. So... That has been like, that has bothered me before. Like, why do we say that? Because it is a dig on women when you're using it to put down a man, right? So, um, but I see what Simon was trying to do in this. He was definitely trying to come for Portia. I'm telling you, y'all, I have said it before. How many times have I said it? Simon has grabbed onto that go naked hair. And he's not letting her go. And I don't mean in the term of I want you back. I mean through the IG posts and the social media. Um, him apologizing for embarrassing his family, he was a lot of that. Yes, it could be your poor choice in quotes, but she I will say she was not on here saying a lot. A lot of the times when she's been on here, she has been responding, or she may come out and say something after he said two, three, four, five things, after he subs her. So a lot of this would not have happened had he not been out here. Now I'm getting ready to say something that I hope doesn't contradict everything I just said. I was getting ready to say Simon wants to be a housewife. So I won't say housewife. Simon wants to be a reality TV star, which is why he's putting all this stuff out. He likes the attention. If he didn't like it, once the news of the divorce came out, he could have put up a simple pray for me and my family as we go through and that be that. But he wants the world to see all of this. You know what I mean? We know that from his divorce from Fallon when he was putting now, granted, I will say if my, if my ex was putting out things about me, I may come out and debunk or say, well, now, wait a minute. I know we're not talking because blah, 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 blah. But some of the stuff that Simon is doing, he's dragging it. Like, come on. You want to be seen out in these reality TV streets. You want, again, he may have money, whether legal or illegal, whether it was gained legal or illegally, allegedly, but what, what can't money buy? fame and I believe that he likes the lights the camera the action Hollywood the Hollywood ask of it he likes it all so again you wouldn't be have to be apologizing if you would stay off of social media Simon but you know hey who am I uh, to talk with somebody just providing commentary on what I see speaking of Simon and Portia so we know that, si that uh, Simon said that Portia was not allowed to film in the home even though she's still staying in the home and she's in the home because per their prenup, if they were to split, she would be able to stay in the home. Well, the news has come out today, according to the Jasmine brand. 
Portia Williams still unable to film for RHOA inside marital home amid Simon Guabadia divorce. Real Housewives of Atlanta viewers hoping for a peek inside Portia Williams' current residence this upcoming season might be disappointed. A recent decision in the ongoing Portia Williams and Simon Guabadia divorce case has thrown a curveball into filming plans for RHOA season 16. According to legal documents obtained by RadarOnline.com, the judge has declined to intervene in the filming controversy for now. This means that despite Portia Williams' emergency request to film inside the house, the residence is still off limits for Bravo cameras. The order read, the parties raised the issue of whether the terms of the prenuptial agreement permits or prohibits filming regarding in the marital residence, as this matter was not formally noticed for an evidentiary hearing on the, substan on the substantive issues surrounding the parties' prenuptial agreement, the court reserves those issues for later determination. As such, there has been no consideration of the terms of the prenuptial agreement and whether its provisions prohibit or allow filming in the marital residence of the parties. Therefore, there should be no reliance on the court for enforcement of either party's position regarding the same until after such time as the issue has been heard and ruled upon by Judge Charles Eaton Jr. This comes after Simon Guabadia sent a cease and desist order to truly original RHOA's production company and Bravo barring filming in the Sandy Springs mansion. The judge has stated that the issue of filming within the marital residence will not be addressed until a separate hearing regarding the couple's prenuptial agreement takes place. In the meantime, Portia has been given temporary exclusive use of the mansion while her ex is banned from entering the property without written consent from the reality TV star. That's interesting because there's a line in the ruling that says, therefore, uh, there should be no reliance on the court for enforcement of either party's position regarding the same until after such time as the issue has been heard and ruled upon by Judge Charles Eaton Jr. So they're, they're saying don't look to the court to speak on either party. So does that mean that technically Portia could film in the home, however, truly original is like Simon and Sinister to cease and desist. We don't want to get involved because it's saying the parties raise the issue of whether, of whether the terms of the prenuptial agreement prohibits or permits filming slash recording in the marital residence. As this matter was not formally noticed for an evidentiary hearing on the uh, substantive issues surrounding the party's prenuptial agreement, the court reserves those issues for later determination. So if there's no issue, right, if they're saying we are not involved, again, the judge has stated that the issue of filming within the marital residence will not be addressed until a separate hearing regarding the couple's prenuptial agreement takes place. So they have to have a hearing to see if the prenup is going to hold up, if they're going to deem it valid. Once they, so say they deem it valid, then you move on to the issue of the filming in the home. But if they're not getting involved, they're not saying you can't, they're not saying you can, and they're not saying you can't. So legally, can Portia film and any lawyers watching anybody legal? No, legally. Um, I mean, if any lawyers or, or legal people or people who know about the law are watching, let me know what y'all think, because from what I get from that is the court saying they're not getting involved in that right now because they got to take care of the prenup part of it first, right? So legally, can Portia film in the home, but again, truly original and Bravo are like, eh, eh, he didn't subpoena us. He didn't send us a cease and desist. We don't want to be involved. The network doesn't want to be involved. So for now, we're just not going to film in the home. That's what it seems like to me. It doesn't seem like she legally can't film in the home truly original and bravo or just like uh-uh we don't want to be a part of that mess that's what i think so y'all let me know moving on to a little bit more bravo news mr andy cohen andy cohen admits he's waiting for the thing that will cancel him after bravo lawsuit so andy had an interview uh did an interview um interview with vulture magazine uh, i believe yesterday and I, I was going to do a video reading the entire interview right I didn't do it yesterday, so now I guess they didn't recognize my IP address, child. So when I went to log on today, they're like, you can finish reading for, you know, a membership. No, I'm not doing that. 
But we're going to talk about a couple of things in the article. I got this from page six. Andy Cohen admitted in a new interview that he is willing, I'm sorry, that he is waiting for the thing that will cancel him after he's been hit with a myriad of accusations and lawsuits from former Bravo stars. Sometimes at night I'll be in bed and I'll think, huh, did I say something? The Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen host said in a Vulture profile published Monday. I'm always waiting for the thing that's going to make it fall down. He added that he's fascinated by the fact that you could say something and have the rug pulled out from under you so swiftly. You have to be smart about what you say because there's no nuance anymore, he told the outlet. People are just waiting to be outraged every for every people are just waiting to be outraged by every little thing. Look, I can agree with that to an extent. I, extent I do believe that there are some people that just want to be upset or just want to call every single thing out. And I think it's hard to, certain things I have hard lines on, of course, right? I don't see no other side. There's only one side. There are certain things though, where I can say, while I don't agree with X, Y, and Z, I can see why that was said or why that was done, although I don't agree, right? Because when you try to live your entire life by hard lines and your neck so rigid that you don't see it unless it agrees with your viewpoint, I think that makes you worse sometimes in the person that has a different viewpoint than you when you're unwilling to move your stiff neck and come up outside of yourself and not think of the greater good of humanity. Right. I also feel like there are things that people can say that can be offensive and they may not realize how offensive they're being that. And here's my thing. When someone brings it to your attention, how you handle it is what I'm looking at. And then there are some things, like I said, that for me, they're very um, hard lines. So I get what he's saying about that. It's like everybody's looking for a moment. I'll say this. There are things that I posted on my account about some of these people and some of the things, the racist, homophobic, um, ignorant, discriminatory things that people have said. I'm, we post these things because we report on these things, like when we do YouTube videos, right? But I'm not saying I want this person to go away. Answer to this. Like, hey, what were you thinking? What's going on? Like, can, can we get some discussion about this? To me, when you ignore the stuff that you've said that's offensive and hurtful and discriminatory and xenophobic and transphobic and racist, that's when I look at you like, versus us having a conversation about it. And I get it. People can say they don't owe you nothing. You're right. Even though I may be the part of the group they offended, or I may not be a part of the group they offended, but I know that what they said is offensive and can speak up. They don't owe me anything. But then at the same turn, people supporting these people, then we don't know, we don't owe you nothing either. It goes both ways, right? So I, I do get what he's saying about that. I do believe there are people that are just looking for anything to to have an issue with you know what I mean so uh yeah I, I agree with that piece of the interview now let's get on to something else about Andy Andy's pal Anderson Cooper also spoke out uh give me one moment Anderson Cooper says his close pal Andy Cohen is doing a lot to stay afloat in showbiz the Bravo honcho has faced uh, much scrutiny in recent months after becoming the subject of allegations made by several former Real Housewives stars in an effort to keep it moving, Cooper said his friend is doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Every day when I turn on my phone, I see the content that Andy is responsible for, Cooper told Vulture of Cohen, much more so than any late night host. Though the Bravo boss makes it look easy, Cooper admitted that his pal is paddling really, really fast under the water. While he didn't name specifics, Cooper could be referring to the outside investigation into misconduct claims uh, Bravo opened up into Cohen earlier this year. So we know about all the uh, uh, we know about all the allegations that have been levied against Andy and the internal external investigations and um, how that all panned out. But I just thought it was interesting that Anderson said that he is paddling really, really fast underwater to basically stay in this showbiz arena. And that's one of his really good friends talking. And then one last thing for the video and about Andy. 
Um, this is according to Reality T. Andy Cohen responds to canceled RHONJ reunion fury. Bravo recently announced that there would be no season 14 reunion for Real Housewives of New Jersey. The fan favorite franchise has been on air for 15 years now, and no reunion is a first. Side note, when New York didn't have their reunion, did it get this much? I know I was upset. I know a couple of other folks that look like me was upset, but did it get, was there that much uproar or did people just not want to deal with the subject matter? So they were okay. Black folks included, some black and white folks included. Did they just not want to deal with it? So they said, it's okay. Just curious. Anyway, naturally all hell broke loose after the announcement, the lack of reunion, which is a real housewife staple usually indicates that something is very wrong. Given the absolute ice wall between OG Teresa Giudice and sister slash enemy in law, Melissa Gorga, Speculation has immediately pointed to them. Now Bravo Daddy Andy Cohen is trying to explain why producers came to this surprising decision. While appearing on an episode of Sirius XM's Reality Checked with Kiki Monique, Andy teased why fans should understand this unprecedented move. I do want to give some context to the announcement over the weekend that there was going to be no Jersey reunion because I feel like there are a lot of theories about what this could mean. I think that the main thing is this will all make sense once you see the finale. Andy went on to say that the RHONJ finale this season will be a classic that people will be talking about for a long time to come. Once producers saw just how epic the season finale was, they all came to the decision separately and decided that the finale is kind of the finale, that the finale is kind of the finale and the reunion all in one. It's in, it's in the great tradition of absolute shocking, dramatic Jersey finales. And they have this final epic group encounter, which is like, it feels like the last supper and is just so Jersey. Andy revealed, and it's shocking and it's dramatic and it makes amazing TV. The executive producer also promised viewers that they will feel complete after seeing the final episode. Additionally, Andy teased that the network is cooking up something to take the place of a reunion. I feel like this announcement about the reunion came without much context. And so I just wanted to film to fill in some of the blanks for you. Andy concluded the Real Housewives of New Jersey continues Sundays at eight slash seven central on Bravo. The last supper, the sit down. So I'm wondering if it is the finale of this cast, not of the show, but of the cast. And I would love to know how the cast feels about not having a reunion. Are they just so outdone with each other that they could care less that they're not having a reunion? Like, I, I wonder how they're feeling about all of this. I do think it's interesting. Again, in my mind, I'm thinking it's the finale of this. It's the, the last supper, the finale of this cast, not, and the Jersey as we know it, not Jersey franchise, period, but the Jersey as we know it. So if they're, um, according to Bravo and Cocktails, they had got that tip that, or, or that email that they were going to be concentrating on what football wives and I forget other wives for the show. They're going to try to bring Tiki's wife back because Tiki seemed like he loved the camera. He was a natural on it, of course, but, and she wasn't bad either, actually. She did have questions. Um, about Teresa and her relationship that she said to Teresa's face. And then, child, we ain't seeing her no more. Anyway, so what do y'all think? Do y'all, would y'all be opposed to a Jersey, re, a, an entire reset, not keeping anyone, just starting fresh? Because at this point, what do they have to lose? People will be upset and say, I'm not tuning in because I don't know these people, but I do think people will tune, tune in because they don't know these people. Even if they don't say it, they'll be tuned in to see what it's giving because they're all new people. Again, it's not like they'd be keeping anybody if they did a whole, if they did an entire shift. So are you open to an entire shift or do you want them to build the cast around Danielle, Rachel, and go from there? I think... I won't even say it'll be difficult because they're not having a reunion to address it, but I don't know about them even keeping Jen Aiden with the mess or Teresa that with the mess that they've got themselves into. Not saying that they would keep a Margaret or Melissa either, but I'm just saying 
in terms of if they wanted to keep someone like someone uh from this cast to tie in to the new cast or just to give viewers a little bit of assurance like hey we are keeping some of our uh ogs or whatever i don't know that i could see them keeping jen and even if they kept Teresa, they would excuse her involvement in it because make no mistake, she's involved as much as she sits on that TV and says Margaret digs up dirt on people, which, yeah, I'm sure she does. I, yeah. But Teresa is doing it also. What, side, that, I, I, that's what gets me about this franchise. Again, they're each pointing to each other like you do this, you do that, you do that. Y'all all do it. Own it and stand in it and say, yes, I did call so-and-so to find out about you. Even if they said, I did it because you did it. Well, I did it because you did it. It's at least admitting it. What I can't stand is when they're acting as if they're above the fray. I'm above. I don't do that. That's a lie. You do do it. But anyway, I don't see them keeping, if they kept Teresa and excused it away, I don't see them keeping a Jen Eden. Like I think Jen would be the sacrificial lamb, if you will. Being especially being involved in all that releasing screeners and all of that allegedly, again, that goes against what like it's very clear you don't send the screener to someone if you've received it, and that's just that. So I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Are y'all open to it? I am interested in seeing what they're going to do in place of the reunion and if it's going to be interesting. He said that they're, they're going to interview the I mean, not he didn't say that, but the word is that they're going to go to each woman's home and interview them. That doesn't seem interesting to me, but we shall see. Y'all let me know what y'all think. All right. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Jersey. Are you opposed to a full reboot? Do you want them to keep some of this cast um, to bridge in to the new cast? Would you be open to Tiki Barber's wife coming uh, back um, as a full-time housewife? Also, let me know what y'all think about what Anderson said about Adelie, Adelie, Andy paddling underwater, trying to stay into this show, uh, show biz life. Cause we know that Andy loves it. He wrote the book superficial. Like he, he, lo he himself loves mixing and mingling and being in um, the thick of things and in the gossip of it all. Let me know what y'all think about Andy saying he is afraid sometimes and lays awake at night wondering, did I say something? that is going to get me canceled. And what do y'all think about this cancel culture? I'm going to tell you, I don't really believe in cancel culture, meaning I don't think there is one. Because cancel means completely done, gone. Like it, And I've seen none of these, none of that happen to these people, none. I'm just going to be real. People can talk about VP, like with Stasi Schroeder. How are you canceled when you wrote a whole book about it? Still have a podcast. Andy wants you to come back to the show has said that it was a mistake to fire her. That's not canceled. People were just wanting you to be held accountable for your actions. Canceled doesn't put you on the Tamron Hall shows talking about you having a race coach. I don't think these people are canceled. So that's when I say I don't believe in, I don't believe there is a can't, I don't believe in cancel culture. I, mean, I don't, because people aren't being canceled. They're just, People want people to be held accountable. Again, I do think there are a group of people that are just sitting and waiting for somebody to say one little thing um, to try and perp and to try and cancel them. But again, that goes back to I don't think there is a thing, a, such a thing as being canceled. I'm gonna be honest, at, at least not for white folks. I haven't seen. I'm just gonna be honest. But y'all, let me know what y'all think. Do y'all agree? Do y'all think there is such a thing um, as cancel culture? Simon apologizing to his family for bringing disgrace upon the family name for his poor choices, even though he stays on social media. And Portia, um, let me know what y'all think. Or do you agree with me? Or do you have the same questions? Like technically, since the court won't rule either way, is she legally allowed to film, but truly original and bravo or just like, we're not touching that. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I will be back later. Say a prayer for your girl. I'm about to go back out here with these people. Child. I just want people, y'all, please pray that people just get in. I say hi. They say hi. I confirm their drop-off point, and we don't have no more conversation. Um, maybe they even keep their headphones in. All right, y'all. I will talk to y'all later. See ya.